Welcome back my dear friends, a very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you wherever you are in this part of the globe. And this is the DADM 3 course under the NPTEL MOOC series, the total course duration which I basically, I this few things which I basically add before starting of this lecture for in each and every lecture is for 12 weeks which is spread over 60 lectures and the total contact hours is 30 because each lecture is for half an hour. And in each week, we have 5 lectures of half an hour each and after each week, you have an assignment. So, in totality, you have 12 assignments and as you can see from the slide, we are in the last lecture for this course, which is the 60th lecture in the end of the 12th week. And um, uh, we were discussing about robust optimization and my good name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IMA department the, at IIT Kanpur. So, in the concept of robust optimization, we are considering the area, idea that main part is basically to model it and the concept of modeling had been mentioning time and again its importance and you basically consider either the, the ellipsoidal concept or the, the interval set and the ellipsoidal concept, this concept of the sets we will consider here in the area of portfolio optimization and I gave a reason for that. We consider a perturbation based on the nominal value and the nominal value is basically we will be considering the mean value based on the prior data. I will discuss that uh, later on. So, our main cons uh, well, the steps of, of proceeding how to solve the problem would be first discuss the deterministic part, solve it and um, the solving that would also be uh, a type of precursor which you have discussed in the reliability case then convert that uh, the deterministic one in the in the probabilistic sense with the constraints being probability with the level of uh, betas being given the level of reliability or the robustness then convert using the ellipsoidal set and using the nominal values perturbation over and above that convert them into the robust counterpart propose the theorems and then solve it using the the simulation method so once you have the perturbation based on the less than type or greater than type the I will only give you the essence of the models, please, please bear with me. So, we will we'll basically have the same maximization problem where we are giving a weightages of lambda to the return of the portfolio and 1 minus lambda to the variances and we are trying to maximize that. The perturbation sets would be based on the fact that we will consider for the less than type and greater than type co corresponding to the fact that we have the returns to be greater than equal to some R p or some R p star and the variance being less than equal to some sigma square p or sigma square p star, we basically formulate the models corresponding to the fact that the ellipsoidal sets are plus type that means this w i s being the weights. So, they would basically be given by the concept that the perturbation, perturbation sets would be more, more important if we consider the perturbation to be on the positive side and if I consider the perturbation set, I should basically use a different color. If I use the perturbation sets for the variances which are the less than time, obviously a minus sign come because I would be more concerned if they are going on to the left hand side for the returns. Um, and if I will be more concerned if for the risk if they are going on the right hand side. So, remember the line which I drew for T 1 being greater it is good for the returns and for T 2 being less onto the left hand side is good for the variances that is what we want as an investor. So, once you basically do the, do the simple model formulation for the box and ball plot and then you, when you consider the interval set for them you have basically the formula corresponding to the return when the probabilistic constraint is converted into the, the robust counterpart considering the box and ball plot is the following. Here r i naughts are the nominal values for the ith stock. This um, box and ball plot concept which we are considering using the L infinity norm and L 2 norm would basically give you the part which is here box and ball uh, counterpart 
and that would be greater than R p because it is going to the right hand side if you remember. And in the case when we consider the box and ball plot for the variances, it will be given by this. So, is the less than type. So, obviously, we add the box and ball and take the 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 intersection and this would be of the plus type because they are on the left hand side. Again q naught, q suffix naught are the nominal values of the variance covariance matrix. So, we basically we will be taking the average of the variance using the concept of bootstrap whatever it is and the off the diagonal element would also be given by the nominal values for each and every stock taken individually. And here as you remember as you know the x's are the the concept of the perturbations we are going to consider for the box and ball. The last constraint where we did not have any, any um, uh, perturbation was basically the sum of the weights is equal to 1 and here we are going not going to consider any um, short selling. So, the probabilistic first constraint is this one which I am highlighting within the yellow color. Has been converted into a robust counterpart and the robust counterpart for the second constraint which was related to the variance is this one which is which is highlighted. So, objective function does not have any, any perturbations because it is not we do not consider robust obviously we can consider. So, once you have the model converted with probabilistic constraint into the robust counterpart you will use simulation methods and solve them and basically give the results. Now, remember one thing changing the values of beta 1 and beta 2 would have a consequence on the concept of the box and ball probability levels. So, they would dictate how your results would be which I will come when I consider the results accordingly. Now, we consider the concept that what is convexity and we know that we have considered convexity in more detail. So, I will just read it with, with it will just be a repetition. A function is said to be convex if f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y here lambda and 1 minus lambda are considered as a and b is equal to or less than equal to um, uh, less than equal to type and less than type or greater than equal to greater than type would basically be coming from strict con convexity and uh, convexity and strict concavity and concavity. We have already discussed that uh, when we are considering the concept of of uh, convex functions, the semi definite, definite, semi and uh, semi definite positive, definite positive, semi definite negatives and, and um, uh, definite negative. So, depending on the less than equal to less than or greater than equal to greater than sign. If an optimization problem is convex, it means its objective function as well as constraints are convex and we can solve it. But in our model, the system equations which is 1.2.3 and 1.2.4 which is the first and the second one are not convex hence it cannot be solved using any classical algorithm. To avoid this we devise an engineering approximation, here it is. For the counterpart which when we are dealing with the variances, we will consider that uh, the variances are given by q, the variance covariance matrix of size n cross n. So, here we will consider any perturbation is happening in a sense that if it is the less than type, we will basically add a negative counterpart, if it is the greater than type, we will basically add the positive counterpart and basically solve the problems accordingly. So, this was the just repetition, this was the uh, model 1 and in the model 1 we had, I am just repeating it, maximizing lambda r p plus minus of 1 minus lambda sigma square p because minus sign coming because that will be when I add the maximization it becomes a minimization. Probability of the return of the portfolio is greater than equal to r p with the probability beta 1 
and probability of the variance of the covariance, variance covariance of the portfolio being less than equal to sigma square p has a probability of beta 2 this beta n beta 2 1 and beta 2 can be changed and that would basically have a consequence on the values of the box and ball values based on which you are going to solve the problem again sum of the weights is equal to 1 and there is not short selling so obviously the weights can be has to be greater than 0 so these are again a repetition the the first constraint when converted into a robust counterpart using the level of beta 1 is this. The second constraint considering the robust counterpart when the, the probability is probabilistic one considering the beta 2 level of probability are converted is this. So, we can solve it using simulation method and get the result. Now, we consider a model which is a little bit different in the sense that we will consider the concept of hyperbolic risk functions which is HARA and what is the story behind that? Now, the story is like this. So, for any decision when you are trying to basically buy and this again I am going to the concept of, of utility for any decisions we have um, the, the investments in place and the investment gives us utility. Now, what is important to note that if your, ut your um, uh, utility functions are quadratic, then obviously we know that the returns would be normal and vice versa. This I had mentioned that not in the, uh, the area of, of DADM3, but I have been mentioning that in quantity finance time and again. But the fact is that the returns of the stocks of the scripts are not normal, they are EVDs with type 1, type 2 distributions. So, Gumbel distribution and all these things. Now, how do we model it? model it? The answer is intuitive and simple. What you consider is that you consider, I am not going to go through the proofs, I will only state the sequence of how the procedure is done. You will consider the distribution to be uh, Gumbel or uh, a type 1, type 2 EVDs with some parameters alpha, beta, gamma. So, these are shape, scale and location parameter. So, how we find it? I am going to come to that later on. So, let us keep that aside. Consider alpha, beta, gamma are known for the EVD. Now, what we do is that we consider the utility function based on uh, the, the investment as HARA and using Jacobian transformation, we convert and try to find out that if the distribution of the returns are, are EVDs, then what is the distribution of the utility function? Once we find that utility function, we need to basically find out. So, utility function returns for each and every EVDs are given. We find out using the HARA, using the Jacobian transformation. We combine them. So, what is the reason of combination? So, this utility functions based on EVDs for each and every stock, when they combined would give me the overall utility function for the portfolio. So, now we are intuitively assuming that EVDs being true for the portfolio distribution, I would basically have a utility which I need to find out and that what we just would do using the concept of, of Jacobian transformation. Once that is done, they would be a functions of alpha, beta, gamma. That is those parameters which we had in the EVDs. Now, how would we find out the alpha, beta, gamma? Obviously, we will need to basically estimate them using the alpha hat, beta hat and gamma hat. What we will do and I will come to that later is that given the data set for the EVDs for stock 1, stock 2 or stock till stock n or script n, we will basically do the bootstrapping and find out the different parameters are alpha hats, alpha hat 1, alpha hat 2, alpha hat 3 for all the uh, 
um, uh, the scripts. Similarly, beta 1 hat to beta n hat. So, this beta should not be confused with the level of reliability beta 1. Obviously, using the same symbol, but let us not get confused. Then we would have the gamma 1 to gamma n, all the hat values, the estimated values, and we basically find it from the sample using bootstrapping method. Once they are find, found out, they are put back into the, the, um, the utility functions for individual scripts considering EVDs and, and utility function based on HARA. And then we will combine them to find out the combined utilities for the portfolios. Once the distribution is found out for the combined portfolio, we need to find out two things. One is the expected value of the portfolio considering the HARA utility function to be true and one is the variance of the of the utility for the portfolio considering HARA utility function to be true. Why we need the first moment and the second moment? The reason is that we want to basically maximize the first moment which is the expected value and we want to minimize the, the second moment which is the variance. So, this is what we are doing. Once you find out the utility, the utility function is given, I will just highlight the values using different colors. So, you, this is the utility function. And this eta, zeta, all these values are the parameters for the HARA utility function. The expected value or the utility function is given for the portfolio is given by this. This I said I am not going to go into the proof, I just gave, gave the general idea how you solve it. And then you find out the variances. Now, only point what the added extra step in calculation in the variance would be that you will basically have a Taylor series expansion, a form you, which you need to basically expand in a Taylor series expansion and basically ignore the higher terms because they would basically be 10 to 0 because the value of return of an any particular stock is 10 to the power minus 2. So, any square value cube, cube values would be 10 to the power minus 4 or 10 to the power minus 6. Hence, we basically ignore them. So, if we consider the, the variance of the portfolio, this is the variance of the portfolio considering the HARA utility function and based on that we will basically try to proceed and do the calculation. So, now, now the problem is again the simple way. Then look the, at the maximization problem. Maximization problem is basically the same one, try to basically maximize a st, uh, lambda into rp, some, some value which you want to keep increasing. That means, we are trying to increase t1 more onto the right and minimize t2 which is sigma square p and basically push it onto the left. So, you want to maximize lambda into rp minus 1 minus lambda into sigma square p p suffix is basically for the portfolio. Now, the constraints are interesting. I will use the colors accordingly. The probability of the expected value of the HARA utility function for the portfolio is this formula which we have already calculated. So, that has to be greater than R p and that probability is beta 1. So, in the case, the yellow, this, this, this orange color which had been utilized if it was normal distribution would be the expected value of the portfolio, the multivariate distribution be to be true for the portfolio if symmetric distribution was, was considered to be true considering the Markowitz principle and model. And in the case if the variance is considered using the HARA utility function for the portfolio, this is the variance and in again if you consider the HARA of this Markowitz model to be true, they would be replaced by the variance covariance matrix. So, now again you will basically have a, a model to formulate using the probability for the return of the HARA utility function to be greater than RP with the probability of beta 1 and probability of variance of the HARA utility function for the portfolios in both the cases to be less than sigma square p and that probability is, is greater than beta 2 again we need to basically form formulate using the robust counterpart. So, we write the equations as it is. 
here is the expected value of the Hara util function. The objective function remains the same, note, note that. And the, the variances for the Hara util function is if this is less than equal to sigma square p, this is true with the level of beta 1 and beta 2 for the first and the second constraint respectively. The summation of the weights is 1 and x's are greater than 0 considering no short selling is there. So, once you basically do the robust counterpart and do the model considering the less than type and greater than type, I am not going to go into the proofs. What you have are these again I will highlight. So, this is the robust counterpart for the first constraint. using the less than or greater than type and here we are using, I will use another color blue. So, these are the initial equations for the perturbation sets and then you use the, uh, the box and ball plot and the box and ball plot would basically have a consequence and what is the value of, of capital phi and the value we would basically be based on the level of beta 1 which we have. That is why we have written capital phi suffix 1. The robust counterpart for the second constraint are given. So, this is the robust counterpart again you see this is less than type obviously it should be because it is on the left hand side and the, the this perturbation sets were basically modeled using the perturbations as highlighted here. Again the value of capital phi suffix 2 would basically mean they are corresponding to the level of beta 2. So, as beta 1 and beta 2 change this values of capital phi 1 and phi capital phi 2 would change and it would give you different results. The third constraint summation of x i is equal to 1 remains same, x i is being greater than 0 remains same. The second model is exactly the same, only that we are putting we are putting the levels of lambdas on the levels of, of uh, weights on the variance covariance matrix and one minus lambda for the return of the portfolio. Again, probabilities are beta one, beta two, for probability of risk a return being greater than or equal to RP. Now, remember one thing: the change in the problem is happening here. You are trying to minimize. Minimize and maximizations are not important. What is important is to note down what is being multiplied with lambda. In the initial problem, you are basically multiplying a value of lambda with RP and you are trying to basically maximize and minimize RP. But here now trying to basically bring the value itself of the portfolio's risk and return. So, that risk is basically given by the double summation of x i into x j into sigma i sigma j rho i j, while the value of, of the returns are given by the, the, the summation of r i s into x i s. So, in one case you are keeping the values of r p and sigma square p as in their objective function in the next model which is in front of you, you are trying to basically keep it as the value being which is being calculated from the portfolio by itself depending on the weights which you are going to invest for each and every stock. The third constraint which is summation of x i is equal to 1 remain the same. The fourth constraint the x i is being greater than the equal to 0 for no short selling remains the same. And the probabilistic parts for first constraint and second constraints are the same. Once you basically again consider the robust uh, counterpart considering the perturbation uh, sets, I will highlight the perturbation sets using the, the red color, blue color. So, this is the perturbation sets corresponding to the 
first constraint which is to do with the mean value of the, the portfolio. This is the perturbation sets corresponding to the variance for the second constraint and that has to do with the variance only. And the changed constraints depending on the robust counterpart are basically given. I am using the same color. This is the robust counterpart for first constraint and this is again utilizing the concept of box and ball plot. Again capital phi suffix 1 basically means this is the value of phi 1 corresponding to beta 1 and this beta 1 value changes would also have a consequence and change, change in capital phi 1 would also result. And similarly, when I consider the corresponding um, robust counterpart for the second constraint, I will use the same color green. So, this is the change constraint for the robust part for the second constraint. So, here capital phi 2 suffix 2 is basically the, the, the value of the reliability corresponding to the beta 2 value. And again, these values I am not repeating. R 1 naught and Q naught both in the other problems, R 1 naught is basically the mean value of the return and Q naught is basically mean value of the variance covariance matrix because you will basically simulate it using the bootstrapping and then um, uh, consider those values. And uh, this third constraint summation of X size is greater than 1, uh, is equal to 1 and X size is, is R basically uh, greater than 0 remains same. Now, I consider the model where I have the minimization being true, but this minimizations are being considered for the case when we have the risk and return corresponding to the Hara utility function. So, minimization for the objective functions remain the same as in the third model. This is lambda into variance covariance of the portfolio minus 1 minus lambda because you are trying to minimize, minimize our negative value would basically be trying to basically pull it up. Minus, minus 1 minus lambda in of, of, the, of the return and the probability corresponding to the first and the stress second constraint have the reliability levels of beta 1 and beta 2, but the values inside the bracket are interesting to watch. In the first case, it is basically the so called return calculation which we found out as the expected value of the Hara utility function based on the fact that we are considering the EVDs to be true for each and every stocks. So, this is the part where I am just highlighting, I am not going to put the color, but where the pointer is, this is the part greater than equal to RP is basically the value which I have for the, the, this, uh, the return of the portfolio considering the Hara utility function. Similarly, the second part is basically in the, the second probability is basically the part related to the the um, uh, variance co corresponding to the utility functions from the Hara utility function. The third constraint remains summation is equal to 1, the fourth constraints are related to each, each and every investment is greater than 0. The counterparts are given, I will just highlight them. This is, so this is for the first constraint depending on beta 1 where capital phi 1 would basically be, be, be calculated using beta 1. And the second constraint counterpart in the reliability sense R is this. Again, the less than type greater than type equality would be used and this capital phi 2 would be calculated from beta 2. And these are the perturbation sets for the second case and the first case. So, I will just request one thing because today being the last class, I will just extend it for by about 5-7 minutes. So, please bear with me. The, the third constraint remains as summation is equal to 1 and the fourth constraint is x i is greater than 0. So, we take the stocks of, of um, 25 different stocks from Nifty 50 starting from ACC to Infosys Tech like Jindal, Axis Band, Ranbaxy, Bhail, ITC, Reliance, Dr. Reddy's, BPCL, Sale, SBI, C plus, Siemens, Tata Motors, Mahindra and Mahindra, Tata Steel, Wipro, HDFC, HDFC Bank, Hero Honda, Hindelco, 
HUL with this Hindustan Unilever Limited ICSA Infosys Tech. The data is taken for indices considering the 10 year range from December from, uh, from January 2000 first, uh, 2000 first January to 31st December 2010 which is 2840 days. We find out the max and the mean considering the EVDs to be true. We basically find out the maximum the return and the minimum return basically sort it out. We find out two sample sets. One is for in sample and out sample. The in sample basically would have about four. So, we basically divide 2040 into two equal sets. So, we, we consider 1400 for the first sample and the 1400 for the second sample and for both the samples we find out the minimum and the maximum. So, this we do give as a density plot for all these 25 stocks. So, they are extreme values depending on whether you want to take the left hand side or the right hand side of the distribution considering skewed onto the left or the right. Financial returns are usually flat and, and have expected peakness. We use the concept of EVDs that has been telling you time and again. So, I will just give you the general results. So, EVDs for the right hand side and the left hand side are basically the returns corresponding to whether the positive one. So, I will just highlight using the red color. So, this is the positive part which you have and this is the negative part which I have. So, like this. So, either skewed onto the left or the right. And uh, we compare the bootstrap results to find out whether the values um, are, are the QQ plots are related to the EVD distribution or normal distribution. The normal distribution does not hold, but the EVD distribution for the central region are quite visible and, and they agree with the fact. Obviously, you have to do a better bootstrap results and take the data accordingly. So, I will just give you few sample sets. I will I'll go um, uh, only um, uh, give you the highlighted points. So, we take basically sample 1 mean max, sample 2 mean max and give the portfolio returns and the variances for model 1. So, they basically formulate if you do about 1000 or 2000 simulation runs, they basically agree with the fact of the mean variance theorem. But the values, what is interesting to note is that if you keep changing beta naught and beta 2, they would be consecuting envelope, uh, concentrating envelopes, overlapping envelopes where you can find out to what level of beta and beta 1 or beta 2 you would basically need to find out the level of risk and the return. So, they would be like uh, on this. So, each levels of betas would give you the risk and re return level for the different beta. So, we are basically just giving you beta 1 and beta 2 as 90. So, this is for model 2. So, the general structure remains the same. So, this is for model 2, this is for model 3. So, risk and return profile the, the frontier is same and this is for model 4. Then we come to highlighting the, the sample 1 min max um, um, uh, weights for the portfolios of the scripts. So, this gives you a distribution of the weights. This is nothing to do with, with the actual optimization, but they give you the results. Then I find out the weights for the investment for sample 2 for the min man, min man max. Okay, so, with this I will end, I'll end this course of, of DADM 3 and before I close the course, I will take another, an, another 7, 8 minutes. I want to thank all of you for your patience. Uh, we have covered, we have taken a long journey starting from concept of, of linear programming, optimization to the latest area of, of um, what are the concept of um, the slacks, uh, the surplus, then the, the concept of, um, of the weights, why they are important, the concept of, of the, the non-linear programming, the, this concept of Gomery cuts and the concept of branch and bound, then we went in the concept of reliability optimization, robust optimization and we consider different type of problems accordingly. So, obviously, we not, may not have been able, able to cover all the topics in, in optimization, but it basically I am sure it will give you a good, good feel that how you can proceed and basically try to pick up the concepts and there are many interesting areas which are still left to be explored corresponding to the fact that uh, the DADM 3 course was basically for 30 hours. 
I want to basically thank all of you for your patience and all the queries which have been there. We have tried our level best to answer them. If we are not, if we have not been able to answer all the queries, I apologize and I am sure that in future any of your correspondence being sent to NPTEL office or to me individually, we will be able to handle and, and, and satisfy all your queries on this academic front. I want to thank all my, 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 my TA for this course, I want to thank all the staff in NPTEL office at IIT Kanpur and all the people who have been able uh, put all their efforts in trying to edit the, the videos, lectures um, here and also IIT Madras which is the nodal agency for the NPTEL course. I am sure all of you would definitely be motivated by these NPTEL courses and, and take up some of you would definitely try to basically read further and we are there as, as, as teachers, professors, tutors, we will definitely be there to help you out and encourage students who are really willing to basically pursue this for a higher level either on the theoretical level or on the practical level. Have a nice day and, and, and I would like personally like to wish all of you the very best for a fantastic uh, career either in academic or in professional life and I am sure you will do very well. Have a nice day and thank you very much.